We began to see our parents aging and we began to think about things like whether we could care for our parents in our own home. Once you realize that your loved one is not safe at home and not able to care for themselves and do the basic things that we all take for granted, feed, you know, feed themselves, bathe themselves, dress, just even care for the house, that's when you need some help. We discovered the advantages of a smaller environment and it gave us a real passion to bring that kind of a small home environment to the community. Think about the, you know, the big facility with long hallways, with rooms off each hallway and everybody sitting in a wheelchair. Believe me, I've been to a lot of nursing homes and seen a lot of uh, CNAs and CMAs that are there because it's a job. You know, they're either talking to their friends on the phone or they're upset about something or they're gossiping about something else. And I think boredom is a real problem in nursing homes. I, I see patients in nursing homes sitting in their wheelchair at the nurse's station without anything to do or they're staring at the TV. And I just think boredom eventually makes someone depressed or they just don't feel well. Uncle Phil had always been a very social person all of his life and was just a very happy-go-lucky guy. And when we put him in the nursing home environment, he was in a dementia unit. There was, it was a smaller unit. There was only, I think, seven other people. However, they were at differing degrees of dementia. And he went from being a talkative person to virtually saying nothing at all. He walked around in his pajamas all day. He stayed in his room. He wouldn't come out except to eat. Um, when people would come to visit him, he hardly spoke to them and pretty much stayed in bed all the time. Mom was in assisted living for a little over a year, and then she fell, and then she had to go to the hospital, and from the hospital she went to rehab, and that happened twice. And the second time it happened, she wasn't able to go back to assisted living. Even though he had dementia, he knew whether he was in a good environment, and it was kind of, as my brother-in-law put it, he was like he was in prison. I actually think that mom wouldn't be alive today if she's in a conventional nursing home, as we'd call it. One of the things we like to say is that comfort care is in the business of providing guilt relief, because the opportunity to move your parent into a neighborhood home minimizes that feeling of trauma that you go through as a family member when you felt that, quote, you know, placing your loved one in a nursing home is something that you would never personally do. It, it was just like a night and day transition uh, where in the nursing home she was a number on a door. Um, at Comfort Care she was, she was there with her friends. There was no um, no question in my mind that this place was head and shoulders above any place else I'd walked into. And the minute he walked in, um, it was just a total difference. Um, he sat down in his recliner and said, this seems pretty good, and actually fell asleep. <laughs> oh, I just loved the home when I walked in. It, it you know, it smelled good, it smelled like cinnamon and food, and it looked like a home, and it just seemed really peaceful. And I just got the sense right away that it would be a place that I'd want to hang out in. And if, if it passes my litmus test for a place to live, then I know that I'd feel comfortable putting my mom or my dad there. What we focus on is the needs of each individual resident because each resident may be at a different place on any given day in their disease process. What I really like more about comfort care is that it's a low stimulation environment and there's a lot of personalized attention and it feels like a home. So I think there's, I, I believe I see more thriving. What we really wanted to see was people who are elderly receive the honor and the dignity and the respect that they deserve after having lived a life of service possibly to their country and certainly to their families. And we wanted to see them have that opportunity in a home setting so that they were living in a setting that they were very familiar with. They can go outside and walk around the yard and look at the garden. They can still do chores like fold laundry and do dishes. And so the transition to that home is still like being in their home. It's very similar. It's just 
a different place. It's nice to see him doing things he used to do, like he gets the bird feed and fills it up and keeps track of it, you know, and goes outside and helps other people with stuff. And I, and I think that's just normal. It's normal activities that you want him to do because there's no reason he can't do things that are normal. He just needs he needs someone to cue him. He needs someone to help him remember to do things, but he can still do so many things on his own. It really is a lot about the nursing staff, and I'm only as comfortable as how competent the nursing staff is. And fortunately, Comfort Care Homes has a wonderful RN, and I love the fact that they have an RN in the home who knows the residents very well. And then the medical assistants and the CNAs that are also in the home, they get to know the residents really well, that when they call and say, Bob's not acting right, well, what do you mean? Well, he's doing this. Does he normally do this? Oh, absolutely not. There's just a difference in the people that they have hired to care for the people at Comfort Care. Um, their personalities are different. They show genuine um, enthusiasm to be there. The caregivers are more like kids to these residents. They're, they're just very vested in what's going on. And, you know, like I said, they'll even come in on a day off once in a while just to check on somebody or you know, they're very, very caring and loving. Those caregivers, every time I see them, they are um, either reading to the residents, they're playing a game with them, they're either watch, helping them watch TV, taking them outside, sitting with them outside. And it's nice to see uh, them treat my mother as almost like a, a friend and relative rather than just a patient or a resident. You can tell they care and you can tell that the residents, you know, care about them as well. In their mind, that's Uncle Phil's home, and they're, they're helping him be able to stay in his home. It's very important to me, as a son, to have my mother get what she deserves in the last few years of her life, and that's what Comfort Care has done for her. It's a place where your loved one can leave, lead as normal a life as possible, where they're cared for, um, taken care of, and, and basically loved by the people around them.